Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Synopsys with Avik Sarkar, who's going to talk about the increasing focus on reliability and what happens with analog and mixed signal design as we move into that more reliable world. Avik, increasingly we're hearing from the industry that reliability is becoming a differentiator. One of the pieces that become, that gets harder to, to deal with because there isn't the same kind of uh, tooling, there isn't the same kind of discipline, methodology, and also um, much more susceptible to things like noise is analog. What do you do? What sort of problems are you hearing? How do you solve this? So, Ed, as you said, custom design has been focused on implementation in many different ways over the years. However, as designers move to FinFET technology nodes, the focus on reliability is becoming more and more. But let me take a step back and start off with what are some of the challenges we see our customers face when they move into, into FinFET technologies and how they address some of those. Why don't you draw this out for us? Absolutely. So how do we go about improving this? So let's start with the, the first set of problems designers face as they move into FinFET technologies. The first is looking at the challenges with the design, its design rules themselves. The design rules are very rigid. They are quantized in many different ways. You can't really design for any length and width. And just the, num the sheer number of design rules that you have to grapple with is mind-boggling. So that itself introduces a lot of challenges for our customers and layout designers as they start to use, say, 16 or 7, or even looking forward in 5 nanometers. The tolerances that you have to deal with in analog as you move down to 7 nanometers, 5 nanometers, are very tight, and they affect analog more than they do digital, right? Absolutely. So which takes me into the second part of where the challenge is like. In terms of, if you looked at pre-FinFET, uh, design methodologies. You would start off with a schematic, which is what we call a pre-layout simulation. And then once the schematic is done, you have centered your design, you hand it over to the layout engineer, he or she does the layout. Then do the, do the extraction and feed it back to the simulation and redo the analysis. So, but this gap between pre-layout and the post-layout simulation keeps on increasing. And that is a big challenge for FinFET technology. How much does variation play into this? Because that affects your tolerances too, right? Absolutely. Now, variation is one piece of it. The second piece is reliability itself. When we talk about reliability, we focus on, for example, electromigration. We focus on cell feed. We focus on variability overall. If you don't factor in how each of them affect your design, and the pre-layout versus post-layout variation, for example, RC calculation. You, you may model the RC effects during your pre-layout simulation to a certain extent, but because of variability, the post-layout effect can be very, very significant. So how do you capture the Rs and the Cs that are coming in as accurately as possible and as quickly as possible so that this gap between your pre-layout simulation and post-layout simulation can be reduced. And another issue that comes into play here is that what gets printed actually on the chip is different than what you design, and your tolerances of that side go down. So now they have all these design rules. A lot of these chips need to go beyond those design rules. How do you manage those two worlds? So that's, and let me come into this very, very quickly, but let me touch upon one more thing, is that the, the mixed signal co content in these chips is increasing. So when we talk about the variability, there is a certain layer of complexity that comes in because we are now coexisting analog chip and digital content at the same time and in large amounts. So you have to manage this. So when you look at all of this in totality, you have to look at which are the solutions that you're using, what's your design platform for one, and the second, to address the key question that you raised earlier was how do you prevent some of these effects from taking over your design process? It's the methodology that you employ. So this becomes very, very important is to figure this out upfront 
before you jump in and start your design process. And for us, this becomes the key enablement piece, is not only enabling the solution itself, not only creating an open platform, not only creating a modern platform that can handle all these challenges, but also validating a methodology that can work not only for a 16 nanometer or a 7, but also looks forward and solves 5 nanometer challenges. One of the interesting things that's happening at 7 nanometers and presumably at 5 nanometers as we go forward is that these chips are being used in places that they weren't used in the past. So yes, they're, they're certainly happening in the data center, but they're also being used in the logic in uh, autonomous vehicles. We've never had that kind of concern about reliability in a seven nanometer chip. It was a two year cycle and then we, we roll over to the next one. Right. How does that affect what you're designing here? So obviously the reliability aspect for our customers becomes even more important when you put it in such mission critical applications. So they start to focus on things that they really did not uh, plan for that aggressively earlier. So electromigration, cell feed, ensuring that enough power goes to every device so that the tolerances we talked about are all maintained, that becomes even more important. Electromigration used to be mostly a sign-off check. When the layout engineer has finished the layout, he or she would feed it off, run it, more as a tick mark at the end. Now what we want to do is have three-step process. One is what we call as propagating the design intent. How do you capture the intent the designer has and give it over to the layout engineer so that they can plan for electromigration? The second part is how do you get an early layout feedback from the layout engineer to the circuit designer that I have to change this wire to meet the electromigration of the cell. I may have to spread out the devices to meet the cell feed need. What does it do for your circuit performance? And then the third element is what we call the sign-off review. How do you make sure that we use the same consistent engines, same consistent methodology throughout the design planning, design implementation, and sign-off process so you can converge on these? As we move beyond the classic FinFET into presumably a 5 nanometer, 3 nanometer, gate all around type of FET, does that change any of the factors here? We are obviously looking at, with our foundry partners, looking forward and uh, exploring a lot of the different techniques that they are working on. We are looking at, for example, more than more technologies, 3D IC kind of structures. We have been focusing on custom design, custom layout. Now it's becoming more of talk about custom shapes. How do we enable, for example, photonic IC devices? For example, uh, 3D IC structures, all within the paradigm of what we are doing. So it becomes definitely all, all of them have to come within the same design platform. So the number of variables you have to consider even when you're doing analog design now is beyond what you've ever done before, right? Absolutely. And this is where having a unified environment that takes it all the way from design, from simulation to layout, and then having it all perform all these different analysis becomes very key. Do the existing tools that are out there, do they do enough or are we going to have to continue evolving those? What we are seeing, more and more, our customers need a modern platform that's open enough that gives them the flexibility to adjust the infrastructure to meet their specific needs. And this is where one of the things we have done here at Synopsys when working with our IP team, we get the f visibility as they start on their IP process very early in the design, let's say a five nanometer. They will start very early. Uh, on their IPs, so we start to get that visibility, so we would fine tune both our design platform and also our methodology, so that they can deliver both on PPA and also on their schedule aspects. Yeah, one of the things that, the follow-up question there is, it's not just the tools, right? It's also the methodology. Does the methodology have to change depending upon what they're doing here? Absolutely. For different kind of circuits, the methodology is different. If you're designing a high-speed series, versus an ADC, versus a custom digital, the methodology may be slightly different, but some of the underlying circuit requirements are going to be very consistent. So we definitely, there is a horizontal aspect to it, and there's also a vertical aspect to it. The reason I ask that question is there's a lot more custom design that's going on. Everybody seems to be doing something. There's a lot of new markets. 
some of the issues are the same, some of them are different, and you do have to adjust your methodology. It's not just do one design and build a billion units. That's right. So when we look at the methodology, we have to look at the methodology from all in all three steps of the design process. When you start the design, when you're doing the simulation, when you're doing the layout capture, all three elements have to have the specific targets that you have established for your end customer needs. For example, if you are designing a circuit that goes into an automotive application versus IoT, the care about is somewhat different. And also the technologies may be different. So therefore, it gets adjusted based on that. And as you go forward, the things that you've learned in the past, things like uh, electromigration, you can't forget about that too. These are all now add-ons that you have to think about the uh, the power, the self-heating that goes on between the, the uh, fins on a FinFET. With custom design, it becomes very important to lay the rules up front very, very precisely. And also defining the methodology becomes very key. So when you look at an electromigration or self-heat or the pre-layout, post-layout variability, and also some of the design rules that you have to contend with, this piece and looking at a solution provider who not only provides this, the design platform, but also the methodology that accompanies this platform for the target technology node, looking at all these elements becomes very key. And that methodology is not just a simple, we're going to build it in this order. It's now, how are we going to test it? How is it going to be manufactured? What do we have to do post-silicon? Absolutely. It's, it's multiple steps in the process. It's from the design itself, it, it, from the design planning, the design implementation, to the sign-off. So one of the key things we did was we integrated our sign-off tools, Star RC, ICV, Custom Sim RA, as part of our design platform so that you see the consistency in the result in the planning stage, in the implementation stage, and the sign-off stage. Is there a way to modularize that methodology so you can shift into smaller batches and new designs pretty regularly? The methodology itself is, even though it's customized for a particular technology node or specific end application, it's sufficiently portable that you can reuse it for different applications. Avik Sarkar, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you, Ed.